88% of our economy in Canada comprises of small businesses. A lot no. of business owners <laughs> don't know the retained earnings, the way they are investing it, what's happening. Yeah. So if you earn anything over 50,000 in passive income, there are two things that happen that the government does tax you at the absolutely highest rate. You know, out of 100,000, 12.2% is they've paid into the tax that they have to mm -hmm. pay. That cannot be avoided. be bringing each week a different guest with all the answers that you have the questions for and this way you can come back to my podcast for any questions that come to your mind and you can focus just on working as everything else this podcast will provide you hi and welcome to the simple wealth wisdom podcast i'm your host sim gakhar my work helping successful business owners and professionals like you build and maintain your lifestyle and legacy exposes me to many very interesting specialists in tax, accounting, law, estates, and investments. In this podcast, I share those people with you and your team so you can hear directly from them. So if you are a successful business owner or self-employed professional, stay tuned for a lot of business building value. And today, Again, I'm very, very excited to have somebody very new from the industry for me, Zainab from Canada Protection Plan and Forresters as my guest. Thank you so much, Sim, for inviting me. Welcome. And I really welcome you, Zainab. It was a long pending that we had to have you here. Thank you for coming. To tell you a little bit more about Zainab, She's Regional Vice President for Ontario at Canada Protection Plan, a Forrester's financial company. With over 15 years of experience in the financial services industry, Zana provides strategy solutions and she coaches advisors to achieve success. I'm so happy to have her here on my podcast where she can share her expertise and knowledge on the product shelf for my business owner and self-employed professional clients. So Zana, let's get deep into my viewers' questions. I would like you to start with what is the current situation of small business owners and self-employed professionals in Canada? You know, that's what my viewers are. And I want you to tell us something. What do you think about it? It's a great first question. Um, and, you know, it's surprising that 98% of our economy in Canada comprises of small businesses see which is amazing and when we put that into figures that's over 1.2 million businesses in Canada 59% of those sim have employees that uh, they have four or less employees and 63% of them are family owned businesses. Wow. So they comprise of not only professionals, but people in many other industries. Some of the leading industries that we see businesses in is um, obviously construction, yeah. professionals, which is what you cater towards, and um, retail trade. Yes. And when we look at the opportunity in this space, it's so important that if you are a small business and you are a professional who is incorporated, you need to plan for not only the short term, but the long term as well, because we have a huge effect in the economy, not only on the labor force, but purchasing power as well. Wow. And the numbers you've shared, they were amazing. So something good for me to know as well. Yes. <laughs> A lot of people know, need our help. And, um, you know, uh, Zena, what are the challenges facing small business owners? Because there's so many of them, and that means they are their own employers. Yes, and that's one of the challenges. It's an opportunity, yeah. but it's also a challenge as well. Um, look, the reason that a lot of professionals incorporate, um, the primary reason is tax. 
Yeah. Tax drives many people in Canada today, not only small businesses. Absolutely, but, you know, you're very tax, right. Tax and the tax rate is something that comes up again and again. And the reason that small businesses incorporate is to get a tax advantage. Absolutely. And it's split in three different ways. So we have our small business deduction, yeah, which is the tax rate that a small business gets on the first 500,000 of net income. 12.2%. 12.2%, absolutely. And that's fantastic. Wonderful. It's a great deal. Yeah. Okay. And then we have what's called the active business rate. So when you're making over the 500,000, you fall into an active business rate, which again, is a pretty good deal General because rate, yeah. it's about 26 and a half percent still very good and so for canadians and we're talking about figures in ontario i'm from ontario so are you yeah so the figures that i am quoting are from ontario um the good thing sim is is that you know there are a lot of tax breaks however there is something called passive income which i think a lot of business owners need to be mindful of Absolutely. And, And that is something which people don't know. Yes. They don't know. A lot no. of business owners <laughs> don't know the retained earnings, the way they are investing it, what's happening to yes. them. So please continue. Yeah, please. So we all know about the small business deduction rate. Yeah. We all know about the active rate. So what passive income is, is which a lot of businesses do do, especially small businesses. When you have excess money, yeah. you're doing really well, you're earning money. Let's take, you know, a doctor or a dental practice where you've incorporated and you're running a thriving practice. Yeah. You have extra money. So instead of it sitting under the a mattress doing nothing yeah. or in a cash account, what you can do is invest that. Right. Now, what you may choose to do is invest it into a property that gives you income um, or you could invest it into the stock market. Right. Now, great, your business is doing well, you have this. But what happens is the government don't like that very much. Yeah. So they think to themselves, oh, now you're taking advantage and we are going to make it hurt for you. Yeah. So if you earn anything over 50,000 in passive income, there are two things that happen that the government does tax you at the absolutely highest rate, you know? So yes, we're giving... seven percent You know very, very well. So, you know, yes, I've given the government saying, you're a small business, we've given you so many tax breaks. But now you're going into the territory where you're doing pretty well and you could move away from being a small business. So why don't we tax you? The other thing, Sim, is that you lose your small business deduction yes. rate. Yeah. So what happens is when you make a passive income over 50,000, you lose that tax break as a small business. And that really hurts. And this is something that small businesses and incorporated professionals really should be mindful of because they need to know how to navigate that territory. Very well said. Just to brief up, she said something very good that as a business owner, why did you incorporate tax? Mm -hmm. And when you are a small business owner and if you are making less than half a million on that, you're only paying 12.2% tax. But the moment it's more than that, then you get into the 26% tax rate, which is a general tax rate, but on your retained earnings, when you invest them, and if you make more than 50,000, then CRA says you're no more into that small 12.2% rate. Now you have to pay even on that amount, 26.4%. This is Absolutely. something which most people do not know because everybody loves to invest. Yes. The moment you make more than 50,000, your small business rate also changes. So Zainab, now <laughs> I want to ask you, How can life insurance help small businesses and self-employed professionals with this problem? What can they do? Because nobody wants to pay so much tax, but tax is a reality. While you're alive, money. you have to pay tax. Yes. When you die, you have to pay tax. Yes. You make money, you have to tax. You invest, you have to pay tax. Yeah. So my business owner clients, my professional clients, mm-hmm. how can you help them? What do you okay. think? Um, so that's the million dollar question. And that's really when we're navigating 
that space of passive income and your business is thriving. That's why we have wonderful advisors like you who really Thank understand you. what challenges a business owner because you're able to speak to their pain points and that's what they need. You know what they're going through yourself. Yeah. Um, life insurance is a really good vehicle. to invest in mm -hmm. and it is its own asset class because it helps you mitigate those tax burdens that we've just been talking about mm -hmm. okay so let's take passive income for example the main avenue that we want to get towards is twofold one is to retain the small business tax rate yes very important second is to make sure that the passive income remains but they're not paying the higher tax rates. Yes. So, anything above 50,000, let's say a small business has an excess of 70,000 or 100,000, what they can do is use life insurance, get a life insurance policy because that is not deemed passive income. Investments are properties are there's no t5 for there's absolutely <laughs> not and that's why insurance gains so much relevance in the small business market and in professionals as well because it's the best way to navigate the tax journey as you mentioned before mm -hmm. not only while the business is thriving so currently but also what happens in the long term Absolutely. Because life insurance is the perfect tool to navigate not only the short but a succession plan as well. So ideally a whole life policy would be really beneficial for small business owners to invest into because that's where they will keep their small business tax rate and not have to pay those higher tax um high rates. Very rightly said. Zainab, I'm going to put it in an example for my viewers. Sure. Let's say around figures somebody made somebody has 100,000 dollars um made gross income they pay 12.2% tax okay. on the small business rate so now 87. Point, um you know out of 100,000 12.2% is they've paid into the tax that they have to mm -hmm. pay that cannot be avoided so 87,800 yes is now in the corporation sitting they can take that money out as a mm -hmm. dividend or salary mm -hmm. if they don't need to take it out they invest it when they invest that money they pay 50.17% tax on the growth now what you're saying is that if they don't want to pay that 50.17% they can either leave that money under the mattress doing nothing or they can put it in a life insurance policy where this can grow tax free they don't have to pay the tax while the money is in the insurance policy but it's still growing and you're not paying tax Absolutely. so this is called tax defer yes this is called tax mitigation this is something that they can do so life insurance becomes a very advantageous for self employed professionals and business owners if you have the retained earnings in the corporations after you've taken your salary after you've taken your dividends and still there so a good part of portfolio absolutely diversification and it still gives you depending on where you're placing the client it still gives you a really good rate of return but with the volatility mm -hmm. of a GIC so you know it's a win-win situation win-win situation mm -hmm. and the cash value in the policy is always vested means that whatever cash value they've got today even if the market crashes tomorrow yes. there's a guaranteed portion of yes, it so that yes. becomes very good and i want my business owners and self employed professionals uh i stress it so much because mm -hmm. their business is their baby yes. they've raised it like a baby i'm so yes. attached to my practice and i'm of sure course. everyone is <laughs> and then you really want to secure it so this becomes a very very good way but now i want to go a little deeper into it okay. that Uh, I've had many guests on my podcast and we mm -hmm. talked a lot about something called you know come once they buy a policy in their corporation mm -hmm. they get the everybody wants to leave the money for the family right right when you buy a policy mm -hmm. in the corporation corporation is the payer corporation is the owner corporation is the beneficiary yeah so my viewers professionals and business owners want to know I want to leave the money to my family and if my family has to pay that tax at that time Mm -hmm. how do they deal with it because they won't even know anything about it so there is something they have heard from me many times 
And I want you to start that word. Okay. Capital dividend account. <laughs> so if you can go into it right from the bottom okay. all the way up and explain my viewers what is capital dividend account and how it can be a solution. That's a big question. It's a big acronym, <laughs> a big word, but let's simplify things because that's why we're here today. Yeah. Um, is so the capital dividend account is also known as the CDA. Yes. Okay. What the capital dividend account allows small businesses and professionals that have incorporated to do is to use excess cash that's not being used in the corporation in a tax efficient way. So you don't have to pay tax on it. Mm -hmm. There's two ways. And the funny thing is, is that we talk about it so much, Sim. Um, but you know, it's not real. It's a notional, notional account. account. Yeah. It's a notional <laughs> account, but there are huge long term benefits when it comes to tax planning to be mindful of the corporate dividend account. And what most small businesses want to achieve is a credit to that account. Right. And there are two ways that you're able to do that. Number one is the sale of an appreciated asset. I spoke about investing into a property yep. earlier. So something like that. The second one is to invest and in the proceeds of a life insurance policy. So again, we're using insurance into the conversation with small businesses and business owners. Um, so these two um, avenues really boost the capital dividend account. Mm -hmm. Now, going a little bit further, when we invest money into a life insurance policy for business owners, we're looking at another thing that's very closely linked to the capital dividend account, and that's called the ACB also known as the adjusted the cost, cost basis. basis. Yeah. yeah. So what happens is that in a very simple form, CDA, the capital dividend account, is death benefit, so the face amount of the policy, minus the it, adjusted cost yeah. base. Okay. Now, what the adjusted cost base does is that drives down and boosts the CDA. Yeah. And the things that allow the policies that allow the CDA to be boosted are threefold. They are um, paying lower premiums for the most death benefit. So having low premiums because you want the sum of premiums all together to be the lowest for the death benefit that the corporation yeah. have got. And believe it or not, I know we love cash values, but lower cash values also tend to boost the capital dividend account. And when that capital dividend account is boosted, our adjusted cost basis, the ACB, grinds down. Right. The earlier it grinds down to zero, the better it is for the owner of the policy, because then they have all of that amount sitting there tax efficiently. Yeah. And that's where the company that I represent, we are very well um, positioned in that space. That's wonderful. So if you can just um, show a little more light on, let's say a business owner bought the policy, I'm going to stick to 100,000. Okay? okay. They um, had a death benefit of 100,000. We're not talking about big just to make it easy for mm -hmm. everyone. 100,000 was a death benefit. And at the time of the death, it was credited, how does it go through CDA, capital dividend account, which is a notional account, to the family tax-free? What happens? If you well, just yeah, say that. Sure. Yeah. So it's all within the policy. So really, again, that account is notional. We don't yeah. see it. So what happens is that, you know, when we're investing into a life insurance policy for a hundred thousand, um, we look at the way the cash value operates. And we also look at how many premiums they're paying for the $100,000 policy. So the sooner that we derive down to zero in our adjusted cost basis calculation mm -hmm. and um, Forrester's financial grinds down to zero, usually about 10 years earlier than other companies in the market space, that's when you're um, policy really starts working for you. So 
Essentially, the beneficiaries won't see it, but what they will see is a much larger death benefit that's tax-free for them. So the funds, the death benefit flows through the CDA, which is a notional account, mm -hmm. and comes into the hands of your family. So if the business owners and self-employed professionals wanted their family to be the beneficiary, yes, the beneficiary of the policy is the corporation, but it has CDA account through which it goes to the family tax-free. Yes. And Wonderful. then with that money, then they're able to do what they need to for the continuation of the business, for the succession of the business. Whatever. It's just so profitable for And them. if they want to leave yeah. it there, they can leave it there. If yes. they want to take it in the beneficiary's hand, they can take it there. Yeah. So now we're talking about retained earnings. We're talking about growth of the money. Mm -hmm. We're talking about uh, passing it to the next generation. But mm -hmm. everywhere, whatever we're talking about, <laughs> We're talking about insurance. Yeah. And insurance is not like you're walking into a bank and you got it. There's something called insurability. Yes. If you have money, if you have a very good business, you've got every single thing that you want to get into this, but you can't get it because you're not insurable. Things do happen. That's you know, right. if you've had a, had an episode of cancer or something happened recently and that made you think about getting insurance. You had a heart attack, you had something mm -hmm. and that makes you think that no, you should have insurance. But now because they're uninsurable, they can't get it. But I know that there is a way <laughs> you can still get insurance and you belong to the company which has guaranteed issue products, which has the products which are more simplified, right. where the clients don't have to go through the meds, even if they've had an episode in the past. So if you want to say something about that, what options my business owners, clients, my viewers have it who are self-employed? Sure. Let's address that. And I think it's a very poignant um, topic, and especially when you're meeting so many people. If you are uninsurable, um, we have a whole life product for you at Canada Protection Plan mm -hmm. that we can give you up to half a million of permanent insurance that, again, will suit small business owners when we're talking about planning for tax and succession planning that Sorry, they can use. I'm going to interrupt here. Did you say half a million for uninsurable? Yeah, half a million. For uninsurable? Yes. Guaranteed issue? Simplified issue. Simplified yes. issue. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's wonderful. Which is great. And um, the benefit of Canada Protection Plan, they are the leader in the simplified issue market. So we were the first company to come out yeah. with a product for people who are uninsurable because we thought insurance should be accessible to yeah. each and every one. So the great thing is, Sim, that when we work together, I can help you from all the way from your healthy clients all the way to your uninsurable clients, which is great, all under one roof. You know, a lot of times uh, my viewers say that I'm diabetic, you know, what every company declined me, my diabetes mm -hmm. is like that. Yes. I know you have a question in your simplified application. Are you diabetic? Mm -hmm. Even if you mm -hmm. say yes, you still get half a million. Yes. It is called simplified. Is it called simplified? Simplified elite. Elite. Yes. yes. Yeah. Absolutely. So that's wonderful. And thank you for, um, you know, really approaching the diabetes topic. Not only is that where we're really strong in our assessment, but, you know, um, traditional insurers do look at diabetes, um, in a certain manner and, those clients can be rated or declined. At Canada Protection Plan, um, whether you're type one, which means that you take insulin, or you're type two, which means you take tablet form to treat the diabetes, we can offer you up to half a million of no medical life insurance. Wow. Yeah. This is very, very good. A lot of people really want that. Yeah. And uh, they can have a permanent or they can have a term. Correct. You have both the options. Yes. So, and one thing more I wanted to share with my viewers because, you know, business owners are the key persons for their business. Mm -hmm. And they, if they want to have a protection for cancer, if they want to have a protection for critical illness. Yes. You know, once you've had an episode, all the companies decline you. Mm -hmm. Most of the, if you had something recently. Mm -hmm. But I know that. CPP <laughs> has a product, even if you've got cancer, even if you've got heart attack one month ago, 
They can still cover you for cancer. If you had a stroke, they can cover you for something else. So do you want to say a little right. bit about that? Sure. So that my business owner <laughs> clients have this peace of mind that something happened, but they still have now some coverage. Absolutely. So um, we have a great critical illness solution and it is um, for cardiac patients, the people that have had a heart attack or stroke in the past, and also those that have had cancer. So it is, again, it's no medical, Sim. No medical. No medical. And in fact, hardly any cushions. Four to six. Yeah. At the maximum eight, if yeah. you want to bundle the two. Yeah. So we're very flexible in our approach across both Canada Protection Plan and Foresters. But for the CI at Canada Protection Plan, you're able to bundle those two plans, depending on the client scenario, and benefit from our no medical critical illness. There's one thing that I would like to add, if I can. Sure, please. Um, we were talking about um, people that are hard to insure. Um, the one great thing about Forrester's Financial is that if your client is rated, our whole life plan is one of the best. Um, plans available for clients that are rated, because some are, yeah. um, we will only rate the basic insurance amount, which is fantastic. Wow. Okay. And secondly, if you have any business owners that are smokers, look, owning a business is a stressful situation. Some people may regularly smoke. Right. If they're smokers, we can offer our whole life plan the first two years at non-smoker rates. But is fantastic. if they smoke after, still continue, do you change it back to not smoker? Well, we do. But think of it this way, Sim. This will your client, motivation. Think about this. It is a motivation, but the way, whichever way you look at it, they get two years non-smoker rates. But Sim, think about this. If you take out a plan that pays out in 10 years, where you're done with the premiums, 20% of the time, you're paying non-smoker rates. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So do they have to do a <laughs> test after two years to prove that? Yes, they do. So they do. You're smart. So they do. Yeah. They will need to do a urine test. Yeah. Um, and some blood. We have a um, non-smoking declaration form. Wonderful. So yes. Wonderful. That was fantastic. <laughs> I think we shared so many things in we such short time. We ran out of the time right now. I can Gosh. see that blinging. But... This was very, very informative, Zenab. And I think, again, my viewers, my audience, they're really loving it and they want to know more about it. You brought totally a different perspective to it, uh, talking about something for uninsurable business owners mm -hmm. as well. So thank you so much for coming here. I really appreciate your presence here. And I look forward to having you here again on my podcast in our future episodes. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. It's been an absolute pleasure. And I've loved every minute of it. Thank, Thank you, you so much. And that was another episode of the Simple Wealth Wisdom Podcast. Please let us know in the comments what you like the most about this podcast. And if there is anything else you want to see or ask, I'll make sure to bring that to you in a future podcast. Watch for us again. Until next time, stay safe. I'm Sim Gakkar. Thank you.